Good morning, beloveds. All right. So this is take two. Um, because I, when I got home from the festival last night, I forgot to do the live stream. So I've already done one this morning. I did yesterday's this morning and now I'm doing today's. So, um, yeah, it is. Now it is actually March 27th. Our title is I stand for life. Our first quote is, therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. And that is Deuteronomy 30, 19. And then the second quote is, life is forever present in its fullness. And that is the science of mind, page 240. We are at the point in human existence when we should be spiritually alert enough to be concerned about all life. In the past, we habitually made choices that satisfied our own personal wants and needs. We often viewed other life forms, animals for instance, as less important than ourselves. Since they had no voice through which to represent themselves, we did not grant them any serious consideration. How are we learning to know other how we are learning to know otherwise? With the growing extinction of many plants and animals and the befouling of our planet with our own toxic wastes, we are being forced to reevaluate our consumer mentality and include all life in the decision affecting the health of our planet. In every decision that involves others, we should begin to ask, is this a life-affirming decision? If it is not, we should certainly think again. I believe that most of us now know that we live in an interdependent universe. Everything we think and do directly or indirectly affects all life. We have the potential in our hearts and minds to think wisely and to move into life more lovingly than ever before. Is there anything that keeps us from doing that? Infinite mind inspires me. Infinite presence expresses through me. Infinite life heals me and presents me as a true spiritual being. I stand for life. I am a life affirming being. Therefore, for all of my choices, lead to wholeness and vitality, not only for myself, but for everything around me. I live in a symbiotic relationship with life, both giving and receiving. In gratitude, I accept my place as a beloved of God and honor it. And that is MS, Margaret Stortz. Okay. And what I'm reminded of is, I, I know going through school, um, like in biology, where they, they talk about the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom and the, the, the um, I think there are five kingdoms now, which is kind of ironic because there were only three when I went through school. Um, but the, the animal kingdom, the plant kingdom, uh, what was the third kingdom? And now, now there's the fungus kingdom, kingdom and the bacteria kingdom. And so, you know, point B, um, but they would also do charts, uh, of, you know, and they always put humanity at the top, the little human at the top, and then all the other animals were below us. And one of the things that I've, that I've seen that really speaks to me, and it speaks to what Margaret uh, is writing about, is that now that they're doing them in a circle and they're putting humanity in the circle and not necessarily in the center of the circle either. Uh, sometimes we're off to one side, um, as a reminder that life on this planet doesn't revolve around us. Um, that life on this planet, we are one, as she said, we're an interdependent universe. And the, the, the reality is, is that this, what this planet is one, you know, one whole organism and we are a part of it and it behooves us to remember, you know, we are not the end all and be all of life. Um, and I can't even say, I can't even say that we are the highest of evolution, you know, because everything is still evolving, including us. Um, and so, uh, you know, life didn't trend towards us. We, we're just one of the offshoots of a particular branch that happened to do very well. Uh, and, and I do, my degree is in anthropology and my partner's degree is in history and we can look back at history and go, and see where we've made some interesting choices as as a species. Um, and honestly, we're one of the few species that really can have devastating effects 
on all the life around us. And it behooves us to think about that, of how, you know, how our decisions affect all life. And that's one of the things that I, that I talk about, um, you know, when you're making a decision, if you want to know if it, if it's, uh, you know, spiritually, uh, I forget what I, what I would normally say. It's like, you want to look at that choice and say, all right, I want to make this choice. Who does it benefit? And I do say, if the only person it benefits is you, but it doesn't harm anybody else, it's still a good choice. Um, if it benefits a whole lot of people and harms someone, then we want to go back and look at that choice and see how we can not harm anyone. So, you know, it's like a choice that benefits you isn't necessarily selfish unless it harms somebody else. And so that's one of the things that as a, as a species, we want to start looking at because frequently we, we make choices that benefit us that absolutely harms other life and so, you know, and, and that's, that's one of the things that Ernest believes that we are, life is interdependent. All life is spirit. Everything around us is made of spirit. That means when you look into the eyes of another living being, you know, that doesn't exactly look like you. Um, and if you can't tell, I am petting the cat behind me, you know, that's, that is spirit. That is God looking back at you. You know, that God animates that creature as well. Um, when we, when we look at trees and plants and, you know, that's also spirit. And so, you know, we want to, that's part of who we are as science of mind is that we want to benefit all life. We want to live in a, as she says, symbiotic way and an interdependent way where we make the best choices um, that benefit the most life, not even people, but, you know, benefits the most life. That's who we are as a movement. Um, you know, uh, one of my, one of my beefs with Christianity is that they're so focused on the next world that they are not taking care of this one. And if you go back and read in the Bible and depending on the translation you get, uh, God gave us dominion, and I don't like that word, and it probably meant something different uh, even up to a hundred years ago, um, but God made us stewards, which means we have the responsibility of managing and managing well the resources. So, you know, that, and, but but Christianity there for a while got really focused on the next world and stopped focusing on the care that this world one needs requires, you know, and that is our job. We are, we are stewards of this, of this, we're stewards of life. We're stewards of our own lives. We're stewards of this interdependent life. So that's who we are as a movement. That's who we are as a people, you know, and I, Ernest, would argue that probably somewhere did, <laughs> you know, um, because the world is good and we want to make the most use of that. So, uh, yes, I'm an environmentalist. Um, but I would say that based on our teaching, science of mind is too. Science of mind is too. So, you go back and read what Ernest wrote. Margaret, Margaret's taken words from Ernest to do that. So, um, her last, her last line before she gets down into the treatment is, uh, we have the potential in our hearts and minds to think wisely and move into life more lovingly than ever before. Is there anything that keeps us from doing so? So this is who we are. We have the potential for the greatest love, what's getting in our way. So I would say the mission today, should we choose to accept it, is to look at that. To look at, and not necessarily to look at what's getting in our way, but look for ways to be more loving, to be more life affirming, to stand for life, both yours um, and other life. And, and not just, you know, people. But look at the, look at the other, the other lives that, 
are around us. You know, what can we do to improve them? Uh, I think it's the Dalai Lama said, maybe you can't help every animal, but at least don't hurt them. You know, so that's, that's one of the things. It's like, if you can't help every life, at least, and those are the choices that we're looking at. So that's the mission today. Um, let's meditate on our potential, the, 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 what, who we know ourselves to be and move in that direction. We have the, the, the loving potential that we have is, is infinite, infinite is what I will say. Um, so yeah, let's, let's use this world wisely. Let us, let us be true stewards. Okay. Um, so that's the mission. The second one is the same one that I give you every day, which is a spiritual practice of, I'm encouraging you to do the spiritual practice of loving, kind and compassionate yourself. Oof. That yawn is too early in the day for that. I got, it's going to be a good, amazing, wondrous, and kind of long day. So, um, I don't know what I was about to say. Oh, the, the, the spiritual practice of doing something loving for yourself, doing something kind for yourself, doing something compassionate for yourself, whatever that looks like. Uh, I always give you examples to engage all five senses in a meal or a cup of coffee or tea, whatever your drink of choice is, um, to, um, eat dessert first, <laughs> to, to, uh, take a nap, to take a walk, to take a day off, you know, to rest. Uh, it is both about self care and about joy. Um, you deserve your own love. You deserve your own kindness. You deserve your own compassion. I also say you're, you are your own best test subject. You know, um, it's hard for me to sit here and tell you, Hey, take a nap if I don't do it. And I do, I make, you know, the, the last eight weeks, not so many naps, but I have, but I still make time to do them. And of course my body will do them for me when at the end of the night, when I could go to bed and I'm still pushing through and I'll just fall asleep. So, you know, I'll take that inadvertent nap. Um, but, you know, taking a deep breath before you speak, thinking about what you want to say, um, making that conscious choice of choosing life. Uh, it's like, who does this benefit? Me. Does it hurt anybody? No. Well, then go for it. And if it, if there's somebody that could come to potential harm, let's, let's relook at this. You know, um, I don't want to pull everything to a standstill, but it deserves a second look, sometimes a third. Um, so make time for joy, but take care of yourself. All right. That's what the spiritual practice of loving, kind and compassionate is. Uh, you will never look in the eyes of someone that God does not love, including yourself, uh, including the four leggeds with fur that share this planet with us, including the trees that don't have eyes to look at us, you know? Um, so practice on yourself. Create that bank of love, kindness, compassion. Create that first response. So no matter what happens, you have plenty for yourself. And when you meet people who need a little extra, practice on yourself. All right. It is a spiritual practice. Um, and I was suggesting uh, in the, the previous reading, you know, to, to, um, to start your day that way. And I can't think of a better way to do is to, than to start your day with loving, kind and compassion for yourself, you know, it will change the way you move through the day. All right. Um, the other things, uh, which are the usual things to do something to engage your mind and your body to drink plenty of water. Hydration is super important. Um, just because I say water, it doesn't mean you can't put some flavor in it, drink other forms of hydration, just hydrate. All right. Um, and that early in your day, bright light is super important. Uh, it goes a long way to resetting those hormones and, um, you will have more energy during the day. You will sleep better at night. You know, just that pineal gland, super important, bright light. It works. Uh, and then as always in the words of Ernest Holmes, open the windows of your soul, allow that breath of heaven 
to remind you you live in heaven right here, right now. It is all around us all the time because it's a state of mind. It is a state of consciousness. I just saw a meme that said, choose happiness. Happiness is not a result. It's a choice. Uh, and that's kind of what the, what heaven is. Heaven is a choice. Um, we can create it for ourselves. And the amazing thing about that is because it is a state of mind, because it is a state of consciousness, we can create it any place that we are. And that is just really amazing. Um, to, to come to that realization, choose, choose joy, choose happiness, choose heaven, choose yourself, you know, choose love, choose kindness, choose compassion. All right. Okay. Um, here's the social media part, creative life, spiritual center, creative life spark. That's who we are on the social medias that we are on. I'm the running Rev Ryan on the social medias that I am on. Um, and if you want to know what's going on with the center, uh, email info at creativelife.org. That will get you on the constant contact and the constant contact. The hot links are hot. Uh, you click on it. When it says click here, it will take you to wherever you want, including our YouTube channel. Um, and so whatever you want to know, it can get you there. And if what you want, what you need isn't there, then it'll get you to people who can get you to what you need. So that's the way it works. All right. Um, here's where I get to encourage you to have a great day, a wondrous day, a fantastic day, a magical day, an enchanting day, a fall day, a get stuff done day, or a rest day, if that, if it is your day of rest, a make it what you want to make it day, a choosing life day, a standing up for life day, um, a good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day. You are not just as you are. As I like to say every day, you are a godly, you are a divine spark, you are a bright light, you are a beloved child of God, in whom God is well pleased and well represented always. Right? Uh, that phrase, sometimes you, sometimes you are the only Bible that someone may ever read. Are you a good translation? Okay. Um, all right, so I'm going to move into the process of my day because it's pack down day at the Renaissance Festival. One last hurrah and huzzah, and then we pack it down for 10 months and then do it all over again. Okay, take care of yourself. Uh, Reverend David should be on. Oh, you know what? We'll have an 11 a.m. service for you. Then we will, Reverend David should be on around 5 p.m. with you, and then I'll be back with you at 9 a.m. Um, from now on, this should go back to normal. Uh, even next, uh, even next Saturday when we're going to go to Dickens on the Strand, since I have a hair appointment at 9 a.m., Tom will go get his hair cut. I will do this. So it'll get done. We should be back to regularly scheduled, um, live streams instead of some of the crazy times that I've been doing. Um, but it's, I love to work at the Renaissance Festival and yeah, but I still want to do this. I, I, I figured it out. All right. Okay, beloveds. Take care of yourself, know that you are loved, and I will see you next time.